Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today I'm going to talk to you about a slightly older paper, but it does give an insight into a very important topic. What is the impact of age on euploidy? In simple terms, does age have a negative impact on abnormal embryos and increase in aneuploidy? And so this paper was a paper with a large number of embryos which were biopsied using a slightly older technology and they looked at maternal age, its effect on euploidy of a large cohort of embryos. At present, what we know is that an abnormal embryo or aneuploidy is common in human embryos. And in fact, as humans, we produce a huge number of abnormal embryos. Fortunately, very few of them will implant and thus at the end product, the chance of having an abnormal baby is extremely low. Many of the chromosomal abnormalities results mainly from meiotic errors during oocyte generation. So the pre-genetic implantation genetic screening, which is called PGS and now it's called PGTA, is based on the hypothesis that if you transfer euploid embryos, then you can improve clinical outcomes. So in the past, day three embryos were biopsied and day five embryos were biopsied. In fact, now we no longer biopsy embryos on day three because there are fewer number of cells. And at day three biopsy, one of the also challenges that we see is that we saw a higher number of mosaic embryos which have cells that can have contain euploid and aneuploid cells. When you get to a day five biopsy, there's an attrition rate. So as embryos grow, some of the embryos that do not reach blastosis are more likely to be genetically abnormal and get discarded. So this, there's a smaller number to screen and they seem to have a slightly lower rate of aneuploidy. So let's have a look at the materials and methods. 2009 to 2014, around 46,349 embryos were biopsied in about 6,365 IVF cycles. The technology was used was SNP-based platform, which is slightly different. And day three biopsies were done in almost 22,599 embryos. And day five biopsies were done in donors, which were about 3,679 and in non-donors, which was 34,032. So if you have a look at the proportion of euploid embryos per cycle, the median proportion of euploid embryos remains steady at around 35% for day three embryos and 55% for day five embryos in women between 27 to 35. And thereafter, a decline started and by 44, it is almost 0%. Again, when they compared egg donors to non-egg donors and uh, with own eggs, the younger than 33 years, the euploid proportion was very much the same again. And the average number of euploid embryos per cycle was approximately four in each cycle for women in their late 20s to less than one after the age of 42 years. So clearly, as a woman gets older, it is more likely that the chances of returning a, a genetically normal embryo are significantly less. So what is the probability of retrieving at least one euploid embryo? And it was high before the age of 35. After the age of 35, it starts dropping. So by the age of 35, one euploid is expected in about 85% of cycles, which is quite high. And remember that even in young women and young couples, you may get all embryos coming back genetically abnormal. 
At the age of 40, one was expected in 75% of cycles, and by 44, one was expected in about 45% of cycles. So what does the study tell us, which, is, which we do not know? Not much, but it gets us thinking slightly. So we'll say, well, the euploidy rates remained quite steady between 24 and 35 years. And thus, what is the best test of quality? Maternal age, anything else, AMH, antral follicle count, FSH, a test of quantity. And for example, FSH is a test of how the pituitary is responding. And again, not tests of quality. They may imply quality, but they're not tests of quality. Age again tends to be the best factor that tells you about quality. Mosaicism troubles day three embryos and in fact now has been replaced by day five screening. Now the question we need to ask is if a large number of blastocysts may come back genetically abnormal, then why is that embryos in younger women do not implant? And I think we don't know that answer very well. You know, we in investigate significantly in, in looking at the endometrial receptivity infections, but I don't think we really know. But that's something which we need to have a rethink about, about how do we counsel younger women who have you know, failed cycles. But also, as women get older, I think the evidence is getting more certain that a large number of embryos may be genetically abnormal, and that may be the reason why success rates are lower. So this study, to some extent, even though it's slightly old, about four to five years old, gives you a slight insight into how do we counsel patients? What do we tell them? And what is that role of doing pre-genetic screening of embryos in the modern context? Thank you very much.